Hi there, my name is Ali and I'm back with another video on Orca, the experimental live coding environment for Linux, Mac, and PC. Um, people seem to really enjoy my last video and so I thought it would be fun to actually do a video covering all the different functions in Orca in a little more detail than I did in my last video. I would recommend checking out that video first before you go through the series because um, this video is going to kind of take for granted that you understand how Orca works and how data kind of flows through this weird ass program. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this this first video in the series is actually going to be going over um, the functions that I would call the math functions and the jumper functions. Um, these are very handy functions and they're very important to sort of, um, you know, getting signals and getting data flowing through your program. Um, they're really good on their own just for making rhythms. Um, they don't really have what it takes uh, to make really good melodies. You can kind of make melodies work with them, but it's not... Um, quite as good as some of the objects I'll show you later in the series. So in this video, I'm just going to be using a simple drum machine running 808 samples in the background. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I've got all the letters we're going to be going over today here. They spell out the acronym IFRYJAM. Um, let's go over the jumpers first. Jumpers are the letters J and Y. I call them the jumper and the yumper. That's what it's called in the uh, reference. Um, the jumpers are very, very straightforward. Um, you put something in the input here, and it comes out on the output constantly, always. So it'll just pass the data down. The jumper passes it from north to south, and the yumper passes it from west to east. These are extremely handy, um, especially um, for getting things into all the tight spaces that you'll have to do later on. So I would recommend getting used to using those. Um, they can also be used kind of creatively in the lowercase forms. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, lowercase forms only are acting um, when they receive a bang, right? So for example, I'll have a little timer here sending out little pulses. So now this jumper is only going to jump things down quantized to every four uh, frames. So you see it doesn't actually go down to the bottom right away. It takes, it waits until the next beat. So you can see that there is a little bit of fun you can have with the jumpers just on their own. Anyways, the math functions is where the meat of this is all going to be. So um, let's start with one of the ones that's going to be most important in this demo, the if function, f. Okay, so if is pretty straightforward. Um, basically, it has two inputs and one output. Um, it's going to output bangs whenever the inputs are equal. So for example, if I put one and one, those are equal, so it's going to start outputting bangs there. If I put one and two, it's not going to output any bangs because those are not the same number. If you don't have anything going in, it will bang because they're the same. And if you also send bangs into this, if both of the bangs happen at the same time, that will also send a bang as well. Okay, so the if function is going to be what's going to create our rhythms for this demo. So, because it's the only thing here that will make any bangs anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put a MIDI event down here just to get us started. This is just going to be a kick drum. So you see it's just non-stop outputting bangs because these aren't equal. So I'm going to put something in there to stop it from doing that. Okay, so let's go over a few options um, on how to create rhythms out of this. Um, ideally, we want to change one of these inputs. Um, so we can go through a few of the different objects that we can use to do that. Um, let's see, what letters can we cover here? Um, a fun one is random. Random is going to take uh, two inputs and it'll output a number. Um, the inputs are the minimum and maximum. So if I say I wanted to generate random numbers between 1 and 4, you see it's going to keep generating numbers 1 and 4 completely randomly, every frame. So if I bring that down there, I think I just got migrants. So you see we've got some random kick drums going on here. And we can change the range of the randomness to change how frequent the kick drums are. So if I had it just to 1 and 2, we're going to get kick drum half of the time. If I change it to one and three, now we're getting a kick drum a third of the time. So the bigger the number here, the less frequent the kicks are going to be. This is the only source of randomness in Orca, so get used to using this if you're into the whole random thing. Another fun object that we can use here uh, is the clock. Clock is a really fun function to mess around with. It takes two inputs, rate, on the left and mod on the right. So rate is going to um, tell the clock how fast to go. 
you see clock is basically going to be counting up from zero to nine once every frame. So you see it counts up to nine, and when it gets to nine, it starts back over at zero. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and put in a rate of two. Now you see that instead of ticking up every frame, it's ticking up every other frame. If I change this to three, it's every three frames. If I change it to four, it's every four frames, etc. And keep in mind, I mentioned this pretty quickly in the past demo, um, letters are also valid inputs. Um, remember, uh, after nine, you go to A, which is 10, B, which is 11, all the way up to Z, which is 35. So you can make a clock go really, really slow if you want these really slowly changing patterns. Now another um, input for clock is mod, and mod is basically going to tell the clock when to loop around. So for example, if I put in the number three here, you see it counts up to two, and then when it gets to three, it starts back over at zero. So it's just going zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. If I change this to five, it counts up to five, and this can also go make it go so it goes greater than nine also, so I can make it go all the way up to Z. So you see it's counting all the way up to Z, and then it goes back to zero. So this can be like the heartbeat of your patch. If you have it set up that way, I'll move it down there just so you can hear what that sounds like. Remember, this is only going to create a kick drum when one is coming out of the clock, so because it has to match up with this one. So let me put in the number three. So now we've got triplets. Now I've got a beat every quarter note, which is just a standard kick drum there. And just with these two, you can create some pretty cool little poly polyrhythmic uh, rhythms there. For example, just to clone this here. All right, so I'll make this one happen on thirds. And I'll change this to another drum. So this is a uh, polyrhythm. You know, this one's going in triplets, this one's going in quarter notes. Not triplets, uh, quarter, I don't know. Triplets, I guess is what you call it. And this can go every five. Technically, it's polymetric, I think. But. And you can get more variation by changing the rate of the clocks as well. So I can make this one go slower, this one can go different speed as well. Here we're kind of getting these stutters because you see that it's spending a little time, it's spending multiple frames equal to one. It kind of hangs on one for a little while, so it's going to keep shooting off those uh, shooting off those beats and get cool little stutter effects. And we can even start to uh, integrate another one of our functions. For example, I could take the modulo um, value here and I could put in a random for each of these just for fun. I'll say between one and five. Pretty cool. So we've got these generative rhythms going on just with randomness and a simple clock. Alrighty, so what else have we not gone over yet? Um, we've gone over this. Okay, let's go over add. Uh, I mentioned this one first thing in the last demo, but add is very straightforward. It takes two inputs, A and B, and adds them together. Um, so you can use this with a lot of other objects. For example, if I put a clock in here, it's going to start adding to those. Um, it basically allows you to create offsets, which is pretty handy. There's a very convoluted way to subtract. Um, there's a demo in the examples folder if you're interested in that. Um, that comes with Orca. So add is pretty handy when in conjunction with other things. It doesn't really do much on its own. So for example, I can go ahead and put an add here. And now we'll add together um, a clock. This is a patch that I did in the past demo. but this is where the jumpers come into play. I can't have two clocks here because I want to have two clocks here. You can't do that um, without them messing with each other because they're in each other's inputs. I don't like that. So I'm going to use a jumper here and a jumper here and another jumper here. So that way I can put a clock here and a clock here and they won't bother each other. So now, one second here. Um, so now it's adding. So you see it's not actually ever going to match up, so let's change that to two. But now if we make the clocks not equal, you're going to get some really interesting kind of um, rhythms that kind of just happen. I, it, it kind of gets really confusing after a certain point, to be honest, but it's fun to mess around with. So this one will go slower, 
Actually, this one will loop a little quicker. You hear we get in kind of a swing there. Let me try this. Make these a little lower. So you've got these repeating patterns, but they're kind of wacky. So it's doing four beats and then two beats of one. And of course, you can start messing with these parameters also. I'll add some randomness here between one and five. I'll add back, add back in the kick drum as well. I'll add some modulation to this parameter here with some random as well. You see why these are so good for rhythms. You can create lots of really cool rhythms, um, which are kind of all over the place. Sorry, these are equal. Okay, so um, now last off, I'm gonna go over one of my favorite functions, which is I, um, it's the iterator. Um, I think I might have already gone over this actually. <laughs> um, but if I haven't, I just wanna clarify. So you have two numbers, two inputs, minimum and maximum. It's kind of like the random, except instead of picking random numbers between the minimum and maximum, it'll just count up. It's kind of like a mix between the random and the clock. So you see it counts up from one to nine, really one to eight, and then it starts back over. Now I mentioned in my past video, I thought it could go backwards, but it couldn't. And hundred rabbits were very nice, so they um, actually made it so it can go backwards. So now if you make the minimum nine and the maximum one, it'll count down from eight to one. I really like this, um, and it really lets you create some really cool rhythms, especially in conjunction with those other objects I've mentioned. So, for example, I'll just go ahead and um, put a jumper here, jumper there, jumper there, and now I'll create some iterators, or in incrementers rather, I guess that's what they're called. One to four, one to five. So we get these, this is just a really good patch for uh, swings, kind of, it's kind of neat. They go backwards, actually. Actually, I'll add some, I'll add another incrementer onto this input here. So I've got that going on, and I'm just going to go ahead and whenever I find a patch that I like, that I've made, that has some interesting parameters I can change, I'll copy it, paste it a couple times, and then change some values. So I'll make that a different drum. Do you 
see I'm basically just messing around with values until I find a beat that I like. Um, that's really all there is to it. Math is pretty straightforward in Orca, um, and really that's all the objects, I believe. Um, let me just make sure here. Random, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've done everything. Oh, except for M modulo, which is probably the most complicated there. I'll show you how that works in a sec. All right, so modulo takes two inputs, just like add. Um, and what it's doing is a modulo operation. If you do programming, you know what that is. But basically, um, it's going to divide the first number into the second number and then see what's left over. So for example, um, if you divide 2 into 2, there's nothing left over, so it'll output a 0. But if you divide uh, 3 into 2, there's going to be 1 left over that didn't divide evenly. So that's the remainder, and it'll output a 1. This is also really, really good for making rhythms. Um, it's Again, pretty straightforward, um, and it can be used a lot like the add object. So I'll go ahead and try a similar patch here. Let's see here, I have to do this jumper thing. <laughs> Once I get to variables, I'll show you another way of doing this. Alrighty, and I'll just use some inc incrementers again. See, we're getting these cool little, cool little grooves. Just a few numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and clone this a few times just to mess around with it as well. Apparently they're all doing kick drums at the same pattern. the values a little bit. Orca has no sense of time signature, so if you get these kind of crazy phasing patterns, that'll never repeat. randomness to spice things up a little. That's all there is to math. Um, this is uh, just part one, so stay tuned for part two. I'm going to be going over the uh, north, south, east, and west objects and the objects that interact with them. Stay tuned. <laughs>